from Allen's. <laughs> How do I get my six month old and nine week doodles to walk well together? They walk well separately. <laughs> you get a you get a two year old dog instead of a six month. Sorry, I'm done. Go ahead. To get we'll, a nine week we'll doodle, oh we'll man, help, we'll help you. I swear. I think you're gonna have struggle. You're gonna struggle just getting a nine week doodle to walk well by themselves. Yeah. yeah. Is is it bad that I don't believe you? I'm sorry. I don't believe you. A six month is gonna have trouble walking just because they still have a lot of energy. A nine week. Honestly, probably isn't even ready to walk outside. A lot of what we do, all right, so well, we're, we're getting serious now. Obviously, we're they serious. are. I mean, I'm sorry, we're being mean. We do believe you, an excellent job, but no. For a nine week doodle, for a nine week anything, I'm gonna focus on working them inside, backyard, front yard, before I ever make it to the front side. I would walk a nine week old dog. I know, I'm just saying that you're not gonna walk them together. No, God, no. Okay, cool, we're oh, on the same I, page. See, I'm distracted. I'm dealing with something here. Do you wanna pass off the puppy? No. Okay. We're in it, guys. We're here. We're here. I promise. Um, I would walk the nine-week-old puppy inside, outside backyard, outside front yard. Get the ability to just have your puppy following you. Yep. They pull ahead, create a little bit of tension on the leash at a sideward angle. They look, show food, guide them back to you. We call this let's go work. We're just teaching them to follow food and follow you. And every time they pull, we do something about it. it mm -hmm. What would you like to add, Bethany? Mm -hmm. Make sure that they both know how to stop at thresholds. Like they're really, really good at that yes. before you even attempt trying to take them out together. Also, make sure that your dogs, and this is not going to happen for a while. I know, they're crazy. Make sure that your dogs can work around each other independently before trying to walk them. So if you have a friend or a spouse or a kid or somebody in the home, one is working one dog while the other person is working the other dog and keeping their attention. They have to care about you before they care about each other, which is very hard for puppies because all they wanna do is play and they're impulsive. And then your walk becomes all about no, 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 which is not cool. And so- It's, in not, it's not reinforcement work, it's just corrective work. But corrective work always needs to have an element of reinforcement, whether it's towards a positive or just redirection. Ooh, I have an exception. I have an exception. Shoot for All it. right, Allens, I'm so I'm on your side now. Let's say that you live somewhere that's not like heavy suburban, not super busy, really calm, maybe an open field, maybe an open hike. Okay, so are you with me? That's an exception because you can put a harness on your nine week old and then maybe your six month old too, whatever is working for you. And you can, you're, instead of focusing on walking with you like a loose leash heel, instead of having to do that in really busy neighborhoods like we have to most of the time, you could go for a leisurely stroll with both dogs. And what you do is you keep a pretty fast pace like you're hiking and you keep them with you um, and keep them moving. And so if they stop and sniff, they keep going. And so you're kind of doing a pack walk. It is better to have an older, calmer dog helping, helping you lead your puppies. So it still may not be possible, but that would be one exception. Maybe their six month old is like a really chill retriever or something. It says they do walk well separate too, so. So, so I would say that if that's the general scenario that you're in, if you're in a rural area or maybe a big hiking path that's pretty quiet, you might be able to, but you're not asking for this perfect heel and for them to pay attention to you. You're keeping forward movement um, and pretty crisp walking and they might be pulling a little and they can be out ahead a little, but you wanna try to keep them back. I'm not dragging you up the hill, but you're all kind of moving as a unit. That's different. That's like a pack walk in a calm rural area. I think I've said that enough. We can move on. Cool. Cool. All right. Oh, and someone gets the breeze. What no, is it? What is it? You, you, no, you know. This is your dog, isn't it? Stop it. it. Holy crap. No, they know this person. They know Poppy. Is this the owner? Is this Poppy's it's the owner? owner? I don't believe you out there. We're, we're I don't check. believe we're you. We're going to check our sources, but yes, you're right. I don't you're believe right. you, but you're What's right. Name? Way on. to we go. If we prize. had a prize, if we had prize money, we would have to vet you because I don't. K.S. Harris, pat yourself on the back. That is the prize. <laughs> well done. I don't see how it is. It is a St. Bernard. Possible. Yeah. Saint, a St. Bernard Bernese Mountain Dog Not Poodle. Poodle. Not that owner. <laughs> you know, you know the owner though, don't you? Don't you? All right. Let's All right, we're on. moving on. Ooh, a lot of Spanish names today. No soy cuatro. Whoa, Terrible look accent. at you. It was pretty good, I know. I know. Well, I, I mean, practicing. pretty good for what's sitting next to me, but no, I was, it's impressive. You're welcome. 
All right, how to get my five-month-old husky to stop demand barking when I'm getting his food ready. Crate, you know the easiest way, control the situation. Put the puppy in the crate. It's management, that's not control. Uh, I think it's control. Puppy in the crate, change rooms, get the food ready outside of it, and then when you bring the food in, the puppy's still barking at you. The puppy doesn't eat until they stop barking. So I'm basically showing them that they don't get rewarded for the demand barking. I only reward them when the demand barking stops and I have some relative calm from the puppy. What you want to add, Bethany? I knew it. What I do, <laughs> what I do is I teach place and I don't teach place with any leash corrections or anything like that with a puppy. It's all through just body language, blocking, food rewards, and then you use you spatial pressure, moving into your puppy with maybe some leash guidance, like, hey, hey like, chill out, puppy. Some leash guidance with body language to help them settle on a cot. And then when they're calm, I give them their food. If they bark at me, so you could try ignoring them, but if it's pretty intense, if it's a terrier breed, does it say the breed? Oh, husky. Oh, mm -hmm. if it's a terrier or a husky, you should probably address it a little bit. And by address it, I mean you'd be like, hey, no, and you'd kind of do firmer body blocking in, like, a, like hey, you, you settle down. Bethany, what is place? What is place? Place means go to this... Boundary, I like cots because they're they're high up, so they're really easy to teach puppies. They mean go to this boundary and stay and be calm for a reward. And so then I create that boundary, I have the food bowl, the barking subsides, I wait a few seconds of quiet, then I reward the calm on the cot. I don't release the puppy to get the food bowl. I give the food bowl to the puppy. The puppy. And you can do this in crate too. Okay, see, are you happy now? I do. I, I like the crate personally, but actually I like the place cot too because you still have pretty it's good control. It's just harder. It's harder with puppies. If you have a high energy puppy though, you got a puppy that's jumping, possibly <laughs> ripping the bowl out of your hand. So if you have a very pushy puppy, I assume they're pushy because they're barking, but I'm talking pushy like jumping at the counter, jumping on you, then use crate. And he likes crate because it does take a higher level of skill to teach a puppy a calm place command. Mm -hmm. And we're talking to regular people, not dog trainers. So. You just gotta play around. You can with do it. it. You can do it. Go practice. Go practice. I have faith in you. Bethany has faith in you. But if you're unsure, start with the crate. Build up some resiliency yeah. and just a strong boundary. When you don't have time, use yeah. the crate. And then try the place that after. Uh, Google Place and YouTube it. It'll give you some ideas of how you can teach it. Yep. All right. Okay. Let's do one more, and then I'm getting rid of I'm getting rid of uh, Poppy here. This bundle of joy. This bundle of joy. <laughs> yeah. Well, you want to see that one? Cool. Okay. Horton so guys, these Who? names. I'm all right, we have a question. Wines when I leave the room. Wait, puppy okay alone in crate, a bit unreliable for longer durations of times. Half wines when I leave the room and not crated, how do I transition? <laughs> I just thought about a glass of wine. <laughs> That's what it made. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying was attention. Was that your transition? A glass was, of wine? I wasn't paying attention because I was just thinking about a glass she of says, wine. She says, just get blitzed and you, you won't hear the puppy. And you'll be anymore. fine. You'll be yeah. fine. You won't even care. Oh, I got to read it one more time. Puppy okay alone in crate. Unreliable for long times, but doing okay. Half of the time whines when I leave the room. No, that's one of two. <sighs> oh, I get it. I get it. Man, all right. I get it now. Can we push the, push the reset button? Reset and do it again. Okay, reset. Puppy okay alone in crate. A bit unreliable for longer durations of times. Wines when I leave the room and not crated. How do I transition? It sounds like you're kind of just in the weeds of introducing a crate schedule. You're, yeah. you're basically introducing a new environment for a dog that's used to probably being with you all the time and you're probably gonna get some whining. You're lucky I did a lesson today where the owners got howling and barking and crying for like- For two hours. Yeah, two yeah. hours and they're pulling out their eyelashes. So you're a lot- Oh, yeah. it's a horrible, horrible visual. Why would you bit? say that? Why? I thought, Why? I, I thought it would be a good one. Why? Why would anyone say that? You could also use crate, um, or you should also use crate as part of your training. So if you're mm -hmm. doing movement work, like turn, reward, come, reward, crate, pause, come out when given permission, reward. Use the crate door to stop your dog. They should only be coming out if they have permission. So anyway, you're doing this, this routine mm -hmm. and crate should also just be a command. And if, it's, um, if they're not too wild with food, you can, you can reward them with food. Now, if they're crazy excited just to work with you, then don't worry about food. But if and they need some leverage. I have breed and age too. I'm going to say that now. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, Labrador, five month old. And you're live, live. So in the second part is not created. How do I transition? 
Oh, so like they're not crated yet. How do you transition into the crate? You start sticking them in the crate and shutting the door. <laughs> That's pretty much it. And when they, they whine when you leave the room, most puppies are gonna whine when you leave yeah. the room. It sounds like you're already dealing with mild case of separation anxiety. It's not bad, but it can get there pretty quickly. That's why she's saying just put them in the crate, leave them mm -hmm. there, see what, how they do. Calmly, don't spoil them rotten. You, you, you mm -hmm. can't like There's give no them... kisses, kisses, and then crate. It's just- Or after them, either, them, boom, or boom. after either. Walk away. Because when you put them in there, they have to wait, pause, use the crate door to teach mm -hmm. them spatial pressure, teach them to wait. Pot like, Poppy, let's go, good. Calmly clip the leash on, potty break. Be low key for 15 to 20 minutes before crate and after crate. Mm -hmm. And it whines when I leave the room. I'm gonna assume that puppy's in crate, just ignore it. If you're leaving a puppy in a room by themselves, we don't recommend that either. We always say you wanna, you wanna monitor your puppy, even five months, six months. You wanna make sure that there's always someone there to watch them. We even have most of our pups drag around leashes. So if we need quick access when to pick supervised. up that leash, yes, when supervised. We don't recommend any unsupervised anything until they're to the point where you can trust them to do a lot of things around the house when they're out of crate. Trouble. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you want to go one of yours? Oh, uh, you we first? need to put Poppy away, and then, and then yes, we can do one of my long oh, ones. Oh, I'm gonna do this one really quick, just because okay. it's an easy one. Thank you, Ricky. From, oh. I can't pronounce that either. Uh, which treat do you use while training the dogs? Um, personally, per kibble. Try to use their food. Try to use their. Food. We are strong advocates of starting with kibble. But there is a threshold where kibble will stop working if you want to prolong your training session. I can usually get about 10 to 12 minutes of really good focus on kibble, but then if you want to push to a more challenging thing or you have a dog shutting down, which means they're pancaking and not moving, then you usually got to up that, uh, that reward a little bit. So, whoa, wait, wait, wait. I want to no, add no, in treats really quick. Yet. I have to argue with you. Okay. I'm not done yet. Argue with me. So, I he love said it. that you might only get 10 minutes with your puppy's kibble. That's because of how this place operates, I think. Because if I tell clients to not feed their puppy, unless your puppy's too skinny, because some puppies are, some small breed puppies yeah, are too skinny. So that's the exception. But if your puppy is a healthy weight or healthy, overly healthy, roly poly -oly, they will not work. Um, they will not get fed unless they work for it. It takes a day, a day. She's saying skip a few meals no, if, that, they're at a healthy, if they're at a healthy weight and use those meals for training. That's not, so skip means totally skip. Oh, no, I'm, offering, pouch. I'm offering my puppy their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if they choose to not eat it, that's their choice. Dogs can do that. They're, they're really good about doing that. Um, so that switches their brain into food becoming a resource and it's associated with you. And so then, and I don't mean one piece of kibble. I mean, I'll take five minutes, do a handful of kibble, and do 10 recalls in five minutes for han handfuls, like jackpot rewards. And that makes this- We're not this... telling you to do 400 recalls with <laughs> you can. pieces of kibble. <laughs> but this completely, you'll be amazed at how this changes your puppy's brain, how they view hands, you'll get less mouthing. Yeah, like so many things are fixed by doing this, commit to it for two weeks. Every, everything you do, you are hand feeding for two weeks, every meal. And, and it'll change so much in your household dynamic. With the way the school is run, uh, the puppies actually go home at night, and so we're not able to control the food as much, but you guys can at home. And if that makes you uncomfortable, then you are gonna continue to potentially struggle with using food and uh, need higher value treats. Make sure that you're using really good, healthy treats. I like real meat dog food, which is a jerky, and it's actually dog food, but it's like a jerky, so they love it. Uh, do you have any thing uh, to add? Blue Buffalo Puppy Bites, they have the DHA for grown bones. Uh, we have Zooks. Zooks no, are no. a little bit on the, what? We have. Just healthy, dogs, healthy. Love. Just food for dogs. Okay, almost the thing things I can break up small. Whatever, yeah, no, it's about healthy small. though. They're if, if they're having to do all, here's the thing. I don't see healthy in here. No, I'm you saying healthy. you're the healthy king. What is wrong yes, with you? Yes, but I see a lot of different dog treats. I look for something that's small and enticing to a dog. If you can get healthy dog treats, awesome. But the most commonly used ones are Zooks. Blue buffalo ones. No, you have real zooks. meat, which is also really don't good. Use zooks. Uh, just food for dogs now at Petco. A lot of the Petcos actually sell them. You can get their uh, beef brisket ones, which a lot of dogs don't really have too much, too many allergies towards. There are healthier alternatives out there. 
But there also is a lot of treats that if you're feeding them in low quantities and you're breaking them up in really, really small pieces, they're, they're totally fine. Um, with the exception of Zooks, yes. And <laughs> no, I'll tell you later. Uh, so when you guys are out on a walk though and you want more leverage with, uh, with your dog, I would rather you go to the store and get a roast chicken and use the white meat, no skin, and have that in the fridge for your outdoor work for, uh, for two weeks. If you're struggling with mm -hmm. focus or insecurity or need some extra, extra leverage. Any of our dogs that aren't following anything that we give, they don't like toys, the squeaky, nothing. We can't get anything. We tell people to grab a the roast rotisserie chicken. chicken or grab a couple breasts and just how boil do, them. How do you feel about the, I haven't used them in a while, but they, I remember using them before and they worked really well. The natural I knew you were gonna say it, they stopped making them. They stopped making them. Natural those? balance rules do not exist anymore, sadly. Mm -hmm. I used to buy them all the time for my own business. Yeah, um, yeah anytime I struggled with a dog and they were allergic to chicken, I'd use those rolls. The ones that a lot of people are using is, um, it's like fresh pet and it still is a big sausage roll, but these other ones were, they stayed pretty good even a couple hours out of the fridge. The, yeah. fe the fresh pet one, it's a big sausage roll, it's actual meals. You can sh like trim so off a little sliver. they can't stay out of the fridge. Not for more than 30, 45 minutes. Okay, cool. But I mean, how long is so a training session? Turn a one word question answer into a five minute discussion. Because we disagree. We use the students' food to train the puppies at our school. We use students' food to train the puppies at school. And if they don't have drive for kibble, we, because we, we don't on. control all the meals, we, we use the treats. We have a lot we, of questions and I have a retraction. Can we move on? I was told that Poppy is not a St. Bernadino. <gasps> Thank you. Poppy is a Bernese Mountain Dog and a St. Bernard mix. Thank you. So, so not a St. Bernadino, no, that's a what... St. Bernese Mountain Dog. Sure. What? Well, I don't know. Sure. Did you make that up? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Actually, sounds okay. pretty clever. I like it. Okay. Cool. We actually thought it was a St. Bernadoodle this whole time. We thought it was a St. Bernadoodle the whole time. So because person, we have you false know. information. So person, you still win who said that <laughs> earlier. You still win because that's what we okay. all thought she was. There you go. Okay. That's why we said nobody would guess it and then you proved us wrong. All right. Ian and Amy Allen. I could ask a million questions. Yeah, but could we answer them in a short period of time? We could answer one in a short period of time. <laughs> we, have a, we have a six-month-old Bernadoodle decided to get an eight-week-old Aussie Doodle. Bless your heart. Uh, I still don't know if that was a good idea or a bad idea. You're about to find out. I tried the negative reinforcement, I think it's called, with the Bernadoodle. Um, she'd just jump and bite me. <laughs> so negative reinforcement, this lady does not mean punishment. If she's referring to dog training quadrants, which is positive reinforcement, positive punishment, negative reinforcement, negative punishment. The positive and the negative mean adding something, and the negative means taking it away. So this, to some of you, this is this We're not hitting is, with the stick. This is too technical. Yes. There's literally you say things out loud that you just shouldn't say. We're not hitting them with the stick. That's not what it means. We aren't doing it at all. Ian and Amy are. They're not hitting her with the stick. <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> okay, sorry. So negative reinforcement means um, uh, pull, uh, ta like taking away food, uh, not giving the dog food, taking away food till the dog behaves. So like things like that, or the dog misbehaves and you put the toy away. Okay. What's so, the question? Anyway, the question. Sorry, I'm trying to explain. Okay. Anyway. Um, she would just jump up and bite me on the back of the legs. Yeah, that's because sometimes it builds drive if it's not done meticulously. Or frustration. Oh, yeah, out of frustration, that's, yes. Now with the Aussie Doodle, she comes through our legs and looks at you. Why did you turn your back on me? Yeah, stop, stop turning your back. That definitely doesn't work with adolescent dogs. It can sometimes, you know, turning your back to avoid jumping or barking or nipping or, or pushy behaviors sometimes works with 10 weeks and under, but it doesn't work, with, that's the whole thing. It doesn't work with older dogs, especially. And, and Sarah, I'm afraid this is answering your question as well from our Instagram. Sarah, seven month old doodle who still loves to jump despite ignoring. Um, oh, ignoring, yeah, yeah. You, don't, you don't ignore. All you're doing is say don't, all you're doing is telling the puppy don't jump right now. You're not teaching the puppy how to not jump, period. And then in the Bernadoodle's case, the six-month-old Bernadoodle, he's getting frustrated 
and disrespecting you because of it. You need to address it. So then, uh, let's see, I'm beginning to think that they are too smart for their own, own good. That's just because these methods don't work on a lot of dogs and they definitely don't work on older adolescent puppies. So you need to address it. Do you want to take over? I like to do body blocks for addressing it, put on a leaf. One more, one more time. Or put on a leash. So both. we have a yes, or both. both excuse me. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over my three strike rule because I think three strike rule has a lot of different categories for different people. One with a not very pushy puppy, I do strike one, which is a simple redirect. Firm no, grab a toy, show them the toy and said, see if you can redirect that focus away from but, you. But it's but a that no is first. Not, yes, it's a no first mm -hmm. and then the redirect, but that's not addressing it, that's redirecting it. So that's kind of going for the dogs that aren't that pushy. Strike two though is if they still push, you address it. Meaning that if this is me, this is dog, they do the jump or the nip, I step, step in. in, no. Not hands, I, know, I was goofing off. You don't use your hands, yeah. it's Hands are body. funny. You use your hands, they're gonna jump and play with them. You actually do the step in and then stand like a tree. Cross your arms and stand still. If you this, want to, yeah. Kids especially. Yeah, kids especially because they're low. I say that because if the hands are low, they may jump up and nip at your yeah. hands still. Yeah. They're looking for something to bite. And even a leash is really valuable too because you can step in and even do forward pressure on the yeah. leash to kind of guide them away so they don't nip at your pant legs and things like that. And that's one of the easiest ways to, re to address, correct, and then redirect the focus. For your six month old, you think you touch me, I touch you. You take up my space, I take up your space. Mm -hmm. And then redirect them. And then what's your third strike? Well, before I get to that one. Oh, sorry. My favorite, my favorite way of thinking about it is take the space that they're trying to own from you. They try to own your space by jumping on you and backing you off. You step in and own the space that they just had. I just said that much briefer and more efficiently. I like mine. Mine sounds better. All right, get to your third strike so we can move on. Strike three, take a deep breath. <sighs> Grab your leash, pick up your puppy. Put them in the crate, close the door, lock it, walk away. Break. Take Here's a break. the thing though, you cannot make it a punishment. A lot of people ask me, Sparky, isn't it bad to punish your dog by putting them in the crate? It's it not absolutely a punishment. is. Think about rational thought. Puppies don't have it. They don't rationalize, oh, I'm in trouble and I'm going to the crate because of that. When you simply put them in there, calm, they say, oh, I guess I'm taking a nap now. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not angry, mad, sad, or glad, it's just a neutral, uh, inter not even interaction. Um, it's just, it's just neutral. It's just matter of fact. It's a business transaction. And it's really for yes. you to take a break, wait five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, bring them back out again, rinse and repeat. If it's a guest coming over, this is totally different. If the dog is jumping up on other people, you need to put the puppy on a leash, redirect, teach them sit for food when people come over. Um, so it's it's totally different. This We're talking about if this is happening to you a lot. With your younger puppy, we are, not, we are much more um, redirect side than firm side if that makes sense so every time my little puppy does it it's just a like no sit good food and do i walk around with a training pouch full of food if my puppy under 16 weeks old is out yes i do for weeks and weeks okay we're moving on alex says pup is nine months old backsliding on potty training they use potty potty bells um but she can't go more than three hours so sometimes we take her out she empties herself hour later pees in the house it sounds like she has, uh, I give her plenty of opportunities because I, I work from home. Our three-year-old wasn't this difficult. Every dog is different. It's truly, truly is. Three-year-old child. Three-year-old child? Was it? No. Oh, God, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Going down a different category there. It was easier to potty train. <laughs> so um, you've done a great job, but yeah, you, you got to backtrack. So stop giving your puppy, your nine-month-old, so much freedom to make those decisions. She needs um, the potty bells. Uh, yeah, I mean the potty bells, yeah. So um, I, if you're not doing crate training anymore, you need to start going out every two hours and go to the back door, pause and sit. Dog needs to be on leash so they don't take like the fun long way. You guide her to a spot, she gets 60 seconds, she doesn't pee, come back inside, but you know she needs to pee. 20 minutes later, you give her another chance. And you can continue to have her ring the bell before you go outside if you want to, but stop expecting her to ask you to do it. You just have to reset. Just as if someone gets a dog from a rescue that's six years old, they have to re-potty train them in their home. It might take a week, it might take three months. So, and this is not uncommon when puppies, when adolescent puppies between six months and one year start to do better, they get more freedom, they get more slack, and then they start to regress on potty training. Super common, tighten back up.
What yeah. about when they bring the dog back in for 20 minutes? Free roam or on leash? Yeah, free, on, on leash. I would do on leash so she doesn't go to the corner and pee. Mm -hmm. All right, Stella, thank you for the feedback, for always helping us. Um, I've got another question. Seven-month-old toy poodle, should I leave food and water out for him at night? Also, my dog is trained to go outside at night, but we pull the pee pad so he doesn't pee on the floor. Um, when is it fine for me to take away pee pad for good? It, take away pee pad for good when your dog is doing good. If he has an accident, then clearly he's not ready for that yet. That's honest to God. That's how you know. You just got to try it. And if there's a mess up, then you've got to pull it. I personally do not leave food out. I don't want my dogs uh, free ranging food wise, like getting when they want, how they want. But some people love that. So honestly, I'm going to leave that to you. But if you're having potty issues, then you can't do it. You said food. Do you mean water? He, she said food and water. Oh, okay. And I, I mean I mean both. Yeah, I actually do, both. do mean both. Yeah. We, uh, we give select times throughout the day where we give the water. Yeah. Not seldom. We give it quite frequently. But we also have what control is over... This is a nine-month-old dog. Still in general, though, we're still giving that water. Seven we're still months. giving the opportunities. But the reason for that is we know now when they need to go potty. Yeah. We got their schedule. You've had your dog for probably six to eight months already. So you know that when, or probably six months, eight weeks, 12 weeks, something like that. That means you already know that they drink water and usually an hour or two later, they got to go potty. So yeah. you start figuring out that schedule and take them on your cues, not their own. Yeah, bingo. That's how you learn about it. Boom. Okay, Tracy, love your Q&A sessions and all your tips. Thank you. Um, very helpful. Six-month-old, unneutered mini golden doodle milo who is generally very sweet oh you're one of those you're making excuses already this is going to be bad we work with him lots on obedience commands um our issues are he started randomly nipping it seems like it's out of the blue we're sitting on the couch on the table and he nips our leg he growls when we try to pick him up it's not aggressive he's just objecting probably just being grouchy we've got some young ones like that here starting to show dominance wrapping legs and arms and humping We've gone back to the, to the leash at all times, but help. You are in your adolescent stage. What was the age? Uh, six months old. And neutering is not going to make this dog stop magically. Um, they get lots of hormonal level changes. Some of the most... Oh, your dog's not aggressive. Uh, I, didn't, I don't mean it this way. But some of the most aggressive dogs we come across are spayed and neutered. Uh, okay, so just, just to ease your mind as far as that goes. Um, it can There's help. no perfect fix. Right. It can, help in, it can help in some ways. But if you were to neuter him tomorrow, he'll still be humping because now he's in the pattern of treating you that way. So we want to work on that first, right? So um, I would say they're already doing leash. I would start to make sure you're teaching place with body language and what, Huge I, one. what I mean by that is if the puppy, if the dog steps off, you move in. Make the dog sensitive to spatial pressure, which all puppies are. We just hold them and coddle them and love them and they lose their sensitivity to boundaries. So you know, teach place with food in a really positive way and then to proof it, to teach them to stay, move into them when they step off and start to practice that dynamic. That would be the first thing I would say. Pausing at thresholds, what else you got? Uh, if they're trying to pick up the dog on the couch, I would eliminate couch. Oh yeah, for a while, not, not forever. Yeah. Give it like two to three months, um, no couch, and then when you do start to add it back in, make sure hit you, you do five minute training sessions of hop on the couch, down, good food, come, or you could teach off, and then good food, hop on the couch, make sure your off is crisp, and then sit down and practice it. You have your puppy next to you. Off, good food, so that's one thing you need to do. The next thing is when you start to wean back in couch, have them come up, sit, good, um, give a piece of food if you need to, and then lift them on the Invitation. couch. Invitation, yeah, so, so they have to ask. Like my Border Collie Dusty, he's 12, and he will still come up and stand and just stare at us creepily. And then we either send him away, back to place, or we invite him on the, on the couch. My and dog so, will put her little head on it and just sits there. <laughs> so, so that's what you're working towards, okay? And we did all that work, and we don't have to anymore because mm -hmm. we have old dogs. And so that's, that's what you're working towards. Can we yeah. move on? I think that was your last one. No, yeah. no, no. You missed the whole back, but what? we're also at 132. However, this person's on live, can you give them some so, advice to go off of? I have four questions here that we did not get to. Are we just going to push them to next week? No, can just the top one. He's, on, one. he's online. He's no, watching. No, I mean, I mean the, these. I'll respond to those other ones. Oh, back. she's, Ricky is going to respond to those other ones. Cool. Not me personally. It's the same page. You, you had the same paper. Okay, cool. You know what? You know what? All right. Diego, right? Right? 
Diego. Okay. Dago? Dago. Day I think of. it's first name, first letter, then last name. D. Hi. Okay, we have to quit. We have to be fast. Um, <laughs> almost one-year-old mini golden doodle growls at almost everyone. Oh, this is not a laughing one. Let's tamper it down. Let's end scene. Okay. Is there any tips to make her more social? We've tried several things. Nothing seems to work. Um, anyone comes up to her, she growls at them, with the exception of myself and my husband. People blame it on getting a puppy during COVID. Oh no, that's not it. Don't, that's not it. Don't worry. Any suggestions would be helpful. I love her, but I want to like her and not be super stressed out. Respectfully, can we do this next week, Ricky? This is a long one. And, and I want to, I, and I'm sorry that we, we don't read the questions beforehand. Um, this deserves our attention. And it's not just you that's going through this, it's a lot of other people with adolescent dogs. So please join us next week and you will be the first question at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Wednesday next week. And if you can't make it, you can always watch the recording of as course. well. Of course, right, of course. I just know that you're live and I feel bad. Thank you so much for joining us, but this deserves um, our complete attention. Anyway, guys, okay. Thanks for joining next us, guys. Next week, Take Wednesday. Care.